All right, thanks for listening to the Insurance Marketing Brain Dump Podcast. My name is Kagan with BrightBee.com, uh, where we help insurance agents be found online. We've got here, uh, as, as I don't know, Scott Howe would say, like the incomparable, the <laughs> intelligent, uh, whoa, whoa. the, uh, he called me. His name's uh, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My well, mom tried those opportunities. They just didn't feel quite right with Smith at the end. It was like gilding the lily, incomparable Smith. <laughs> Right, I think, I think I uh, think I think Scott Hell like said like the beautiful, and I was like, wow, beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I got that in. Three-time All-American. <laughs> I know, right? So we've got Matthew Smith here with Rocket Referrals, which uh, a company we love, and then also the uh, the beautiful, the uh, compar- incomparable, incomparable. <laughs> Chris Paradiso, Paradiso Insurance, and Paradiso Presents. So welcome. Where are all. we? Thank you. Germania 2020. San Antonio. The beautiful. Hill, the hills overlooking San Antonio. It's Absolutely like beautiful. Villa it's good stuff. Here. Yeah, we're having a great time. So uh, so let's just dive into this. So uh, Let's remind people we are with Matthew from Rocket, Rocket Referrals. Referrals. The incomparable, yes. The incomparable. The incomparable. Yeah. Good looking, good beard, everything else, <laughs> right? Good hair. Okay. So. <laughs> so with all that being said, uh, what, tell us a little bit about what you're talking about at the Germania. Yeah, so my focus this morning is going to be talking about the, the modern referral. So we're talking a little bit about, I'd spent time as an insurance agent years ago and then ran a real estate company, and kind of technology forces the old proverbial cheese to move, where you don't know what worked before, what got you here is not always going to get you there. So whenever there's changes and shifts in the industry, there's mm-hmm. opportunity that's created on the back end of that. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the experiences which drive referrals and then the mechanisms of action where people are actually completing the referrals in multiple different channels um, beyond just the word of mouth channels they did when I was an agent. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the multiple channels and what that what that looks like. I know I know you're going to talk about this in your class, but let's recap a little bit. Give us a summary of what that what that really looks sure. like. Sure, there's really about three or four tranches that people use when they're they're vet, they're vetting out a company and when also people are having good experience and sharing. So word of mouth of referrals never went out of style. Uh, they still happen every day. It just the problem is is that most referrals happen when you're not even there right? It's one of your clients is sitting down getting a friend who's saying, I'm starting this business or my daughter's driving for the first time. I got to ask some questions. Who would you talk to? Right? So the question really becomes as an agency, how do you end up influencing or garnering referrals if you're not going to be there when the conversation's happening, right? You're not in the room where it happens. So, so how to have and how to get word of mouth referrals when you're not there, which are really predicated on, on experiences. Experiences drive referrals. If you start with good quality and ingredients and with good meals for the most part. If you start with good experiences with clients, you're going to end up getting more referrals. So word of mouth referrals are your first path. But what happens after somebody ends up hearing about the agency? Well, usually what happens is as soon as their friend leaves the room, they grab their smartphone and they do a quick Google search of the company that they were just referred right. to, yep. and they want to see what's everybody saying about Everyone this. Everyone wants to vet it still. They trust, they trust the referral, but they still want to vet do it. Do you think people online. and agents believe that, though? No, I, I don't it, even think they know. Yeah, well, it, it's just incomprehensible to me sometimes that an agency who would never allow the paint to chip and peel on their physical brick and mortar location just will abandon their complete online presence. Right. And they don't realize the impact that this is having on the sales funnel, right? So someone goes into your building and they or drive by to see it, looks great, they Google you, you got a two star rating because you got one four star review from a happy client and then an employee left and gave you a yeah. one star review. And you review, have no clue. And you have no <laughs> but, clue right. that you're just, everybody is going there and then it's stopping. So you've got a real link breaking the uh, chain there um, so Google reviews are a big part of the equation as well. Quick question. That one star review that sits there unnoticed, not talked about, mm-hmm. unresponded to, Yeah. positive, negative, what would your advice be to agents? Um, I'm your client, I go and I give you a one star review. Yeah, I think that you've got to be demonstrate that you're proactive as an agency, that you're... So can you give a couple examples, like what would be a proactive for yeah. an agent to do? I mean. Every, every company, whether it's a great restaurant, whether it's Rocket Referrals. So, so I had a guy once who gave a, a one-star, only one-star, only l- lower than a five-star review that I remember Rocket Referrals giving, but we got a one-star review once. And it was a misunderstanding from a client that I worked with. He didn't under, quite understand what, what was supposed to happen. Something happened that didn't meet his expectations and left a review because he wanted to 
someone to hear him, right? It was like someone who stepped on a thorn and wanted to shout out about it. Yep. So what I did was two things. First of all, I responded to it online and, and told him, listen, you know, I, I want you to know that apologize that we haven't met the ex expectations that you have and I'm here to and I gave him my phone number right there I said give me a call I want to do it and um, and then I called him personally immediately within 24 hours and I called him up and said hey I just wanted to thank you first of all for giving us the type of feedback that's gonna allow us to become a better company we were serious about these types of things and so we went and talked to him and we ch and in about 15 minutes the problem was solved now the interesting thing was the same guy went back out and deleted his comment and I yeah. didn't ask him to delete it in fact sometimes having some of those um, those little hiccups and warts out there I mean I go to get went to some um, five-star level uh, restaurants while I was here downtown just love checking out the food scene even the best restaurants will have a couple people out there who maybe whether they're knuckleheads or whether they're just saying they didn't have a good experience and it kind of legitimizes it you know if you have the occasional because people understand that this is going to happen human or, beings they, you're human yeah. but what they want to see is that you're responsive to this kind of absolutely things. but yeah. but it hurt like as an insurance agency owner it hurts it, it hurts to see that <laughs> yeah. right and then i think sometimes our i don't our, think it hurts i think i think it i, I like, think what it does is it opens your eyes that you know, because what you said was I responded to it, which was key, and that's what I was trying to get to first and foremost, right? You can't take a one star and just ignore it. Yeah. Insurance companies do it all the time, yeah. just as agents do it, and I say to myself, why is somebody not responding right. to, you know, to that experience? You know, leaving your phone number and, 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 and being proactive like that has changed somebody who didn't really maybe have a good experience to having a great experience. They now have become that raving fan yeah. because of your actions after. Yeah, you, you actually have one of the best processes I've heard of in your agency of how you respond to these because if I'm not mistaken, tell me if I'm wrong here, you personally like to respond to these yourself. Like I have you, managers first. Yeah. On all the negative ones, I... But and, you guys and, respond within, I mean, less no, than we respond hours, right, right away. Right? So. Yeah. How our process, which I'd yeah. hope more people that are using Rock Referrals would do this because I think I, how this all started was I'm thinking of process, I'm like, I'm paying money every month, I'm doing this, but there's got to be more to this. Mm -hmm. So what we started doing is taking a nine or lower, even a nine, we could reach out to, hey, Kagan, just wanted to reach out to you. Thank you very much for giving us that review of a nine. That's great. What can we do differently to earn a 10? You'll be shocked on what you heard. That's how we ended up opening up on Saturdays. We opened up on Saturdays because we got nines. They're like, we love the experience, but I bought Just a car on Saturday not and I couldn't yet. get an ID yeah. card. If we didn't reach out to them and people would say, oh, it's a nine, forget it. No, it's not a 10. Yeah. Cool. Now people are like, wow. And then once we hang up, we, we have a handwritten note card mm -hmm. with a gift card that goes in every single one, whether you give us a zero or a 10, gets a handwritten note card with a gift card. Anybody that's a nine or lower gets a phone call and a handwritten note card. So I think it's really important here be to, to kind of differentiate a little bit what you said because you, you, there's gold in what you just said here. But for people who are not familiar with the difference between what we were talking about a second ago, which is online reviews, and what Chris is talking about, which is net, net promoter surveys. And yep. net promoter surveys... The way I like to think about it is they're a lot like wearing a Fitbit bracelet, they are. right? That's yeah. monitoring the health, but the health that it's monitoring is the agency health and then the relationship with each, each individual client that comprises that book of business, right? Yes. Yes. And these surveys are done every six months. And the reason that they're done every six months is because like a doctor's visit, what's a doctor do when you first go to visit, right? They take your blood work, right. they check your cholesterol levels, they right. wanna know a baseline score because Absolutely. whatever money follows management. Absolutely. Whatever you can measure, you can improve upon, Right. And so we have to tell you where you started so then you can start doing some of the best practices like Chris talked about. Right. And then in the process, you're gathering feedback and that feedback loop that you established that you're learning about your customers experiences, what they like, what they don't like. The, the guy who went and gave you a one or the gal went and gave you a one online. 
was telling you something about your business sure. processes sure. and an area of improvement. Now, information is only as good as the execution that comes as a follow-up. Now, some of those no better, best practices that we recommend, we can automate for the agencies. Sure. Some of the things you've gone above and beyond like agencies are supposed to do, right? When we tell you that your agency could improve by doing things, the question is, do you want to become like 10X that agency? Absolutely. Do you want to take it to the next level? You do, but you have taken it to the next level. And so that's really the, the secret in the sauce. Now, what we like to do with the net promoter surveys is identify people in, in one of three categories. You either have someone who scores you a zero to six when they're asked, how likely are you to recommend this to a friend or a yep. colleague? Those are called detractors. Not only are they not referring, they might be saying the ones that are, would say the negative things online. The reason you do the surveys, it's like getting upstream. If you're prospecting, you're getting upstream of the issues before they go and spout off to somebody right. negatively on social media, catch them, right. call them, and fix the problem. Now the entry, what happens is, you're gonna have six months in between the survey. Just like the doctor's telling you to do these exercise programs and things like that, you're gonna have six months to be able to change this. And then at the end of six months, you're gonna measure, did we improve with that client? And that's really where you're gonna be able, we see almost half of the people who start as detractors moving into that promoter category six months later when the best practice are, are implemented. Yep. And this is what most referral programs, most online review programs fail to do. They're only looking to harvest good relationships that you already have, right. um, seeds that you've planted a year Versus ago. Versus nurturing the ones that you have tremendous opportunity with. That's right. And, and I come from Iowa, which is a big agricultural state. And if all I did was have a combine that came through and like cut the corn and the beans at the end of the season, and I never replanted, I never test the soil quality, I never right. like worried about all those types of things, and which is what a lot of these companies do that just give you NPS or, or, or review tools. They just come in and they whoom, make a pass through your book. No question. They gather it all. But I'm saying is like, what about next year? Yeah. I got to plant some seeds. I got to cultivate the relationship. I got to improve our business practices Absolutely. as a farmer. I'm not going to stay relevant Absolutely. when these big ag companies come in, right? That's the, the family farmer and the independent agent are in the same boat. They're up against big competition, direct rights of insurance, big ag type of thing. The question is, how are you going to stay survive? And you better be getting some tools to be taking you to the next level and that's kind of where we come in i just think uh you know when people say well why what's the purpose of rock referrals retention 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 mm -hmm. and that r word is very important and, and we just change I our name i think the other key factor is <laughs> name uh, change rocket retention rocket retention <laughs> um not with only retention i think if you're going to grow a relationship and become a raving fan you need to know and communicate with your customers. Rocket referrals, yes, is the start of it, but agents have to look in the mirror and say, hey, how are we gonna pick up the phone and communicate with those clients who, who give you a seven? Seven is not good enough. Yeah. That's like saying, I, I, we did a quote and we, we almost earned their business. Well, I would ask the owner, did you make any money? What are you in business to do, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we and, need to communicate and, and I th better. I think there's a natural tendency, um, just as, as humans, we don't we don't like to hear the negative. I mean, in yeah. in the end, yes, we try to train ourselves to we want to hear that negative, but we're not always overjoyed to hear the negative. And so I think there's a lot of times that um, a lot of people are not training their minds to respond in the appropriate manner, and so so they decide not to do anything because you know it's a it's a foreign territory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People talk. I, I don't know where this came up with, but people have this expression. They say poking the bear. They don't want to poke the That's bear. That's right. They don't want to poke the bear because the bear. they may Geico's leave. Geico's poking the bear every minute of every day on, on right. lines. Right. You get on the highway. What's on the highway? Right. That's right. The billboard. That's when right. you turn on your radio, what's there? The get go. You turn right. on your TV. Where are you? Yeah. The get go. You turn on your computer. At the end of the day, we're, they're being poked. What do you mean? We have, I hear this all the time. Agents right. don't want to. The, the bear's being poked. The, yeah. the bear don't hibernate anymore. Right. The internet has changed the world. That, that's right. And I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you don't poke the bear, if you stick your head in the sand, you're going to go extinct because right. your people, people have options. And the, if you look at companies like uh, Tesla, Disney, Hyatt, they're spending billions of dollars on customer experience. Yeah. Like billions I, would it I be? Go, yeah, I go to. Uh, I love going to some of these Hilton hotels, and I and I walk out in the morning, and they have a breakfast spread out there. But they they have cold pressed juices. They're they're 
fruit is hand cut. It's not coming out of some prison can <laughs> onto a plate type of deal. I mean, it's, it's the details that matter. And that's customer experience. That's why they're spending billions of dollars to know. And why do I keep going back to that hotel? Why do, why do you like a double tree when you walk in and they have warm cookies versus cookies? Because warm cookies are better. They're just quantifiably better cookies, right? I have to agree with that. The yes. warm cookie is better. Warm cookies are better. And so this Breach is, it. Breach this, it. This is, a, this is ultimately what you're up against, is that these companies spending billions of dollars to elevate customer experience are your competition. You don't know it, but what's happening is your clients are being conditioned to a higher level of expectation Absolutely. based upon what these companies are doing. So if you do nothing, you're losing ground Absolutely. at the end of the day. Can't argue that. Do I wish I could argue, Do you guys hear the rocket ship like launching right now? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's blasted. <laughs> the only one that's really excited about that blast, I think, is Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> that is so. hilarious. Well, we're out of time, but really appreciate yeah. you. Uh, man, I you got fired up. At 745, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, Chris has been up for like four hours already. He's worked out. He's gone ahead and had some energy drinks. Man. I knew I had to come correct. Can you imagine me on an energy oh drink? Oh, my goodness. God, people, that's like people are crack like, on me. Hey, like you want coffee? Food? I'm like, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Well, I had an espresso last night, and yeah. boop, no oh, problem. Man. <laughs> man. Peace. See you later. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. Yeah, uh, this was fantastic. Love having you, Matt. Don't Thank forget you. to subscribe and like uh, this podcast Down below. on YouTube or wherever else you're listening or seeing this. And if you have any other questions, definitely check out the show notes. And you Before can find we leave, more. let's just say um, uh, one of the owners, I know at least one, was it Tori that served in the military? Yeah, Carl actually Carl. served in the military. Served yeah. in the military. Just want to say thank you, Carl, uh, for your service to this great country. Rocket Referrals has been great. Um, Thank you. Just want to send our shout out to Carl and uh, what he's done for freedom isn't free. Absolutely, guys. I'm going to say that's a brain dump. Yep, brain dump. There you go.